Welcome to Home Tiny Lab. My name is Christoph, and in this video, I will show how I have used my Nano Pi and Neo 3 in my home lab. So, the main reason that I bought the Nano Pi Neo 3 at a point in time that was because the Raspberry Pis were too expensive, and I was looking for a low powered device that I could run in my home tiny lab 24 7. That's now a role that my Raspberry Pi is doing. Every link or everything that I am showing I will put the link down in the description and I am working with uh, chapters. Everything that I'm showing is most of the time from friendly elec so the makers of the nano pi and they have some official images that you can download so here you have the list uh, the one that i will try today for this video will be the debian one so we, we are going together on kind of exploration here you have the download link site so let's click on this one you have to select in my case google drive and you have the list of images if you click on the official images folder the sd card images because you can only use sd cards or i think that you could use an uh, usb connected device also but we are going to use the sd card images and then you have to select the version that you want to use so i'm going for the debian bookworm core version so let's double click on the file couldn't preview file that's normal so let's download it download anyway and it's downloading the image so if we go back to the page where we have the list of os's you will see that i propose also some tools to use to create the sd card and one of them is the win32 disk imager so i've put the downloaded image in one of my project folders you will see that you still have to unzip it also so let's go with extract here so it's busy extracting When the file is extracted, we have the image file. So I have inserted the micro SD card that's formatted and it is presented to me as the system E drive. Uh, this is the one that I will use to burn the image on with the utility that friendly elect proposes, the Win32 disk imager. So here we have the application. Let's open in our project files let's go to images and here is the uncompressed image and let's open it proposes immediately the e drive and let's click on right and let's do it this business The image writing is uh, done, so write successful, let's click on OK. Let's exit uh, the Win32 disk imager. And you will see that the E drive is also vanished from your uh, file explorer. So let's close this also. So I'm going to pull out the micro SD card from the dongle. So let's pull it out. And now I have to put this into my so the system is booting up now but we have to wait a few minutes because it is also expanding to use the complete micro sd card so the nano pi is started up and when you have started up for the first time then the account and password to log in is username pi and password pi so to view the ip address that can be a little bit tricky like in the manual described this is not working so you cannot use ssh pi at no, I, I cannot use ssh pi nano pi uh, dash neo3 but with an ip scan tool on your network if you see microchip technology included this is the ip address then for your neo3 so let's try to do a first login on the system and let's do what's in the documentation ssh pi at and the p address that was 
indicated and enter that password was i and there it is so we are logged in if you look at the filing system we will see that all our disk space is allocated it's a 128 gig uh, micro sd card so one of the main goals is to self-host with this little device because it is not power angry but if you want to use containers there is a little problem by default almost all the friendly elect images come with overlay filing system and because docker containers are also using overlay filing systems if you're leaving it like this it will use a lot of disk space when adding images of uh, docker containers so you have to address the overlay filing system for this if we, if we have a look at the documentation so here is the page of the debian core section so the first thing that they uh, say is to update the the packages put the right time zone then you change logo but that's not something that i'm going to touch but here the install docker on debian this is a link that we will need so the first thing is to update. So here we have our command prompt again, and let's do the update. Starts with sudo and then apt update. Password is still pi. And let's do upgrades. So here we are going to keep uh, the locally installed version of the SSH, the underscore config file. Okay. Okay, the update is done. So let's have a look at what else we have to do. The following thing to do is to look if our time zone is uh, well set. So let's clear the screen and first check the current time zone time that control i need to have central time so this is not really what's needed now let's see which time zones we have available so same command but with the lists time zones added and the one that i'm interested in are the europe time zones so to make it easy for me i can quit this and i can add to do a grab europe so and the one that's but i'm interested in is the time zone europe brussels and you will find it here so i have set for i have to set the time zone europe brussels so now we are not going to list time zones, but to set time zone. And this has to be done with the sudo. And we will set Europe and Brussels. Okay, set time zone. And this is done. And if we check this, now we have time zone europe brussels but because we want to use install docker on debian because we are going to install casa os and the only thing that i am trying to do this with casa OS because it's a easy way to enter the realm of uh, self-hosting and to use uh, in an easy way docker so let's click on the link and here you have uh, three methods so we are going to go with the easiest way method one this has to be done so i have cleared the screen and the first thing we have to do is to create a password for root and this again is with sudo password for root and we will enter a very secret password please enter twice the same password updated successfully first thing is done then we have to write to a, a file an init file that we are going to disable the overlay filing system so with su dash root c and then we are going to echo overlay fs equal this 
table and this we are going to write to the init file that's in the root directory wipe data and let's close on this again so if you will press enter this line will be written overlay equal to overlay fs equal to disable to the file init wipe data enter you have to enter the password for root now and the file is created so if we read if we would do an ls minus all from root we will see that the file init underscore wipe data is present so now we have to reboot the nanopy and again this is with sudo and reboot so the system is back online and we are going to log in again into the system uh, here is the command to log in in the system by still the password okay uh, let's clear this and let's do a check of the filing system and now you will see that there is no overlay filing system present so this is the page of casa os if you want to use the instruction on your system simply click on the copy icon then go back to your shell session and you can paste it in i use ctrl v to do this then you press enter okay the installation has finished and here you see that with this link you can go to the casa os page and beginning to configure casa os itself so I am going to select this, control copy, and then I'm going to uh, the browser that I want to use. So if you are going to the screen, you will see this, and you have to click on go to start and give your username. And this is my preferred username. Then a secret password and repeat this secret password and then create and we are good to go show news feed from casa os uh, blog uh, i'm going to cancel here and this is your first screen that you will be welcomed with i'm not going to uh, explain everything about casa os thank you for watching and if you like this and if you want to see more videos about the little box that is a nano pioneer tree don't forget to subscribe and to give it a like see you in the next video